What's up, guys? This is Zara from MadeForMedical.com, and today we're going to talk about adrenal gland tumors. This video is part of a review series over the endocrine system. In the previous videos, I went over the physiology of the adrenal gland and the pancreas. So if you're interested in those videos, check them out too. And as always, at the end of this video, don't forget to check out the latest videos and information at my website, MadeForMedical.com. So this next topic is about adrenal tumors and some of the really common questions that they actually test on step one and NCLEX. So before anything else, let's just start with the basics of physiology. What we have here is the pituitary gland. And what the pituitary gland does is that it releases hormones. One of the hormones it releases is ACTH. Now what does ACTH do? It goes to both of your adrenal glands, adrenal gland one and adrenal gland two. And once it goes to the adrenal gland, what does it do? It helps to stimulate the release of cortisol and aldosterone on both sides. Now, not only does it stimulate release of hormones, it actually causes growth of cells, especially the cells in the glands here. This, basically, endocrine gland requires ACTH to remain alive and to grow. Okay, so there's two things that ACTH is doing. It's actually inhibiting apoptosis and causing the gland to grow more or to proliferate and stay alive. Now, what happens if I have a pituitary tumor here? Now what happens if I have a pituitary tumor here? First scenario, a tumor that's releasing a lot of ACTH. So I have a lot of ACTH coming through. What's it gonna do? It's gonna go to both sides, number one. And number two, it will cause a growth of these glands because what's it doing? It's making sure these cells stay alive and that they are growing at the same time. So we have a lot of ACTH that stimulates both of these glands. And what does it do? A lot of cortisol and a lot of aldosterone. So what are we gonna see? What does aldosterone do? Reabsorbs sodium, gets rid of potassium, and it helps to reabsorb bicarbs also. So with high aldosterone levels, we see hypernatremia, hypokalemia, and alkalosis. These are the three really common electrolyte abnormalities, and examiners love to ask questions about them. So we have a pituitary tumor, high ACTH, cortisol, aldosterone, etc. And that's, you know, with cortisol it's known as Cushing syndrome, and with aldosterone it's known as Kahn syndrome, right? Where it's high aldosteronism. Now the second point I wanted to make here is when this cortisol and aldosterone gets released, what does it do? It goes back and actually inhibits the release of ACTH. This cortisol and aldosterone is going back and saying to the pituitary gland, stop releasing ACTH. Let's say, for example, the pituitary tumor is gone now. We have a normal person, and now they have a tumor in adrenal gland one. And what is this tumor releasing? It's releasing a lot of cortisol. It's releasing aldosterone. One of the two, it doesn't matter right now. So it's releasing a ton of it, a ton of it, and a ton of it. Well, if it's releasing a lot of aldosterone and cortisol, what's the other side releasing? Well, saying, you know, adrenal gland number one is doing way much more of a job than the body needs, and two is just laying back and not doing anything. I mean, not releasing many hormones. This cortisol and aldosterone goes back and inhibits ACTH. Now, what do we say ACTH is required to do? The glands need ACTH to remain alive and to grow. So we don't have to come out of the pituitary anymore, and it's not stimulating the glands. And as a result, there's no more ACTH. But this tumor that's here does not need ACTH to stay alive and to grow, whereas this gland number, adrenal gland number two, needs ACTH to stay alive. So what happens? After a long time of having this tumor release a lot of cortisol and aldosterone, your body spends a lot of time without ACTH, and if it spends a lot of time without ACTH, what's gonna happen to the cell? This adrenal gland here, this endocrine gland, will no longer remain alive, and it won't grow, so it shrinks. It becomes smaller and smaller, and it basically atrophies. So I have a patient who has really high cortisol and aldosterone because of this tumor, and its other gland is basically gone. It's shot, there's nothing of it, so what happens after I do a surgery to remove this adrenal tumor? So if I take it out, 
what happens is my cortisol levels will drop. I'll drop my aldosterone levels also, but now your body says, I don't have new cortisol and aldosterone. Because your pituitary spends so much time without releasing ACTH, that this factory shuts down. So now your body can't respond to any stress and create any cortisol and aldosterone. That's why the patients with adrenalectomies and their other adrenal gland is completely shot, they go into basically a cardiovascular collapse. They become hypertensive, etc. because they don't have any more cortisol and aldosterone because the one gland that was working they actually had was taken out. So what other types of questions can they ask you? They love asking this one question where they say, they give you a scenario, a patient has a tumor, and they have high sodium, low potassium. Basically, it makes you want to think hyperaldosteronism, and they say it's from an adrenal tumor that's releasing it. Then they say, we removed the tumor and we decided to do a CT scan. What would you expect to see on the CT scan? An atrophic adrenal gland. The other one that does not have the tumor will be atrophied, and they love asking that question. So just by that simple you know, thing, you test a lot of different concepts. You test anatomy, you test physiology, with this whole negative feedback. They want to see if you know how this entire mechanism works. How ACTH is released, how cortisol is released, and how negative feedback works. Okay, so that's about the adrenal tumors. Thank you so much for watching this video, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to check out my website, madeformedical.com, to watch other videos that are part of this series as well.